great. Good afternoon, everyone. Simgaget, Sigramanak, Gibbet Wiltzik. My name is Melanie Mark. My Niska name is Lahaikwiskak. I'm very proud to be BC's Minister of Tourism, Arts, Culture, and Sport, the MLA for Vancouver Mount Pleasant, and the first and only First Nations woman to ever get elected in BC's history. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that we're meeting and joining today on the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil -Waututh nations. I'm here today with my colleague, Minister Mike Farnworth, Minister of Public Safety and Solicitor General. As well, we are also joined by Leslie Varley, Executive Director of the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Centres. With us virtually is Barb Ward Burkett, Chair of the Ministry's Advisor Advisory Council on Indigenous Women, and together we are working towards uh, two important goals. One, keeping Indigenous women, girls, and 2S LGBTQQIA plus people safe from violence, and two, advancing reconciliation and gender equality. For more details, it is my pleasure to introduce Minister Mike Farnworth. Thank you, uh, Minister Mark, and thank you everyone for being here today. And I'd also like to acknowledge by, begin by acknowledging that we're speaking with you from the traditional unceded territories of the Musqueam, tsleil and Squamish peoples. To begin, as many of you will know, a fire broke out today in Vancouver's Gastown neighborhood. Vancouver fire has been on the scene since the fire began and have completed several rescues from the upper floors of the building. We estimate that 70 people are affected and Vancouver Emergency Support Services is establishing a reception center for residents needing assistance. BC Housing is also in communication with the city of Vancouver to assist where needed. And our thoughts are with those affected, their families and the firefighters on scene. Today I'm here to speak about the Path Forward Community Fund. Protecting communities and ensuring people feel safe is a crucial part of our government's work. Yet as we mark the Prevention of Violence Against Women Week, we know that too many Indigenous women and girls and Two-Spirit people continue to face disproportionate levels of violence. That's why I'm very pleased to announce $5.34 million in new grants to increase safety planning capacity that is self-determined by Indigenous survivors, family members, and communities. In keeping with the idea of nothing about us without us. We are looking to the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Centres to develop and administer the new Path Forward Community Fund. With 25 friendship centres across British Columbia and a 50-year track record of supporting Indigenous communities, the BC AAFC brings a wealth of experience and expertise to this grant program. The fund will be accessible to support First Nation communities, urban and off-reserve communities, Métis citizens, Inuit and Two-Spirit communities. Indigenous safety advocates know best their community's safety priorities. And now they will have more resources to support them. The Community Fund is a key response to the final report of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls, and a milestone in our shared journey towards meaningful reconciliation and gender equality. The Community Fund is the initial step our government made in the path forward, BC's plan to end violence against Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit people. The path forward is also reflected in, set in Action 3.8 of BC's Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act Action Plan. We are dedicated to creating a province where Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit people have the required supports to prevent violence and heal from its devastating impacts. The Community Fund aligns with the work my ministry and the Parliamentary Secretary for Gender Equity are undertaking to develop an action plan to stop gender violence, including Budget 2022's $22 million to support sexual assault centres over the next three years. Government funding and support is vital to addressing violence. However, it is only through the meaningful participation of Indigenous communities and organizations that we can make the journey towards lasting reconciliation. Thank you. 
Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Minister. Now I'd like to welcome the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Centres, Leslie Varley, to tell us more about how the Community Fund is going to support communities. Thank you. Thank you, Ministers. BCAFC is very pleased to be selected to administer the Path Forward Community Funds. For many years, Indigenous women and girls have been targeted openly by serial killers and gangs preying on our colonial poverty. Where there are industrial work camps, we see high rates of violence against Indigenous women and girls. We see gangs targeting our young girls. We've lost many women and girls who should have been protected by Canadian society. We receive substandard service from the police and from the judicial system. We've long endured colonial mentality of Canadians whose unspoken belief is that we're not worth fighting for and not worth saving. After a federal inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and the provincial inquiry, this is a key opportunity for us as an Indigenous women-led organization to be administering anti-violence funds to Indigenous communities and organizations. Until now, we've had to go through mainstream organizations to protect and support our women and girls. And that clearly hasn't worked for us. BCAFC is collaborating with Battered Women Support Services to develop frontline training for Indigenous women and girls to work in this field. This is a first step in developing our own province-wide capacity as Indigenous women for Indigenous women. BCAFC is collaborating with Aboriginal Housing Management Association, with BC Society for Transition Houses, and with Battered Women Support Services to develop, to develop a network of Indigenous support from town to town throughout BC, including information, counselling, discrete protections, and including safe houses, transition houses, and second stage housing, as well as prevention and intervention services and counselling services. Indigenous women who are interested in developing their culturally safe support skills should give us a call. I deeply thank the province for supporting Indigenous women to serve and support Indigenous women. This is an important first step towards reconciliation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Leslie. Um, I'd now like to introduce Barb Ward Burkett, a longtime advocate for urban Aboriginal families. She is joining us virtually. Over to you, Barb, if all goes well with technology. Nice to see you. Mr. Mark, Tanze Dotinak, Nia Wahia Kuapta Skol Sagasquian. Hello, everyone. I'm joining you today virtually from the unceded ancestral territory of the Tlaitli Tene. Um, as the collective work leading to this new funding announcement of 5.34 million was unfolding, four core themes were identified as a path forward toward ending violence against women, girls, and 2SLGBTQQIA plus peoples. This initial work was led by Elaine Alec of Alder Hill Planning Incorporation in her planning sessions that were held in 2019 and 2021 and uh, where uh, there was identified need for safe spaces and safety plans for healing supports, for strengthening relationships with our partners and for access to resources. At that time, a number of challenges were identified through this process, such as funding and resources that were identified as the greatest barrier, working in silos and cultural education burnout and education engagement of ministers. It pleases me and I'm so happy today that these challenges are starting to be addressed by the BC Minister of Public Safety and through ongoing dialogue with our federal counterparts. Today, an urban Indigenous organization, the BC Association of Friendship Centres, has been selected to support Indigenous community groups and organizations both on and off reserve to bring Indigenous women and girls together in a safe environment 
to give voice to issues of gender-based violence and abuse within their lives, their families and communities, as well as to heal and learn from life experiences that build resilience and strength through a lens of reconciliation and trauma-informed practices. Today, the voices of Indigenous women, girls, and 2SLGBTQQIA plus peoples will be heard in the province of BC as we align our priorities leading to safety, support, healing, and decolonizing programs and practices. Thank you so much for the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Centers for stepping up to the plate as you always do um, and for being in line to um, fund, to support this funding stream and also to the province of British Columbia. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you so much. Uh, that ends our formal, formal remarks, but I guess I would add as someone who's uh, been a long time advocate myself uh, for missing women, indigenous women in the community as an indigenous woman myself, uh, I just want to acknowledge the hard work uh, Barb is doing up in Prince George, which a lot of that advocacy with the Highway of Tears has been central to your work, and, and Leslie to really acknowledge um, the place of urban Indigenous people in our province and being a safe, uh, a safe haven um, for Indigenous people across this province. I want to acknowledge Elaine Alec for her work. Um, she really facilitated the voices of community and heard loud and clear what government needed to do to move forward, to create that path forward. And it's a lot to endure, uh, considering all the traumas that Indigenous women have and continue to face. So I want to acknowledge Elaine, who can't be with us today, and to thank her for her, her leadership to giving government, Minister Farnworth, myself, and the rest of our cabinet a roadmap uh, to move forward to mitigate and end the violence against Indigenous women. And I know this fund was a call to action, so I especially want to thank uh, the survivors, the family members, those that said to government, we need to see more action. And as Minister Farnworth said, nothing about us without us. So with that, thank you to everyone who made today possible, including the public service for, for facilitating this work. Hawa. And I will be passing it over to Minister Farnworth. Thank you, and now we're going to questions. Please press star one at any time and you will be placed in the queue. As a reminder, please unmute your phone as you will not be audible until your name is called. Our first question is from Binder Sajjan, CTV. Hi there, um, this question is for Leslie. Um, how will you know um, that these projects are a success given the number of issues that you've outlined so far? For Leslie. Sorry, oh. it's okay. She, it's Benjamin. She asked for Leslie. Yeah. Sorry, the first part was cut off. Yeah. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure. Yeah. Hi, Leslie. Um, so I, I guess what I'm um, looking for is like, how will you know that you know moving forward that with this funding is a success and result in less um, you know Indigenous uh, women and girls being impacted by violence? Ah, thanks for the question. Um, even, even the part where we get to administer funding to our own families and communities and projects to uh, address violence and to do it in our way, in uh, acknowledging our experiences and our culture and working collaboratively is a success in and of itself. This is a societal problem. It's not a problem that Indigenous women have created. So Canadian society is going to have to work with us to address the violence against women and girls. Thanks. Binder, do you have a follow-up? I do, and this one is for Minister Farnworth. Um, just on another topic, just wanted to ask you about the fire again. Just, do you have an estimate of how many people uh, may be impacted at this time? And can you talk a little bit more about the supports available? I don't have a, a significant uh, uh, amount of information at this point. What I can tell you is obviously that uh, Vancouver Fire Department is on the scene. BC Housing has been notified. There, It is anticipated at this point that about uh, 70 people have been impacted. Uh, by the fire, but that's the uh, the latest information that I have. Our next question is from Amy Smart, Canadian Press. Amy, go ahead, please. Yes, hi. 
Okay. Um, Washington State created the first uh, statewide alert system for missing Indigenous people, kind of like an Amber Alert. I'm just wondering if DC is considering something similar and, and what the thoughts are of uh, the Indigenous women leaders here today. Um, okay. Could you repeat that question? It came in very, very quietly. I caught a bit about Amber Alert, but um, not much else. Sure. Um, I was just asking about uh, Washington State has created an alert system for missing Indigenous people, similar to an Amber Alert. Uh, I'm wondering if BC is considering the same, and I'm also curious to hear whether uh, some of the women leaders on this call um, would support that or what, have any concerns about it. Um, Certainly in terms of the uh, Amber Alert that's used uh, right now in British Columbia, uh, it is our plan to have the uh, uh, broadcast intrusive alerting system as, it, as it's uh, referred to uh, in place uh, for the freshet uh, season uh, and the wildfire season this year. Uh, the issue about an, an, an alert for, for missing uh, uh, Aboriginal and Indigenous women is something that uh, certainly I would uh, be willing to, uh, to, to take a, a look at and obviously would do that in consultation uh, with, uh, with First Nations. Do you have a follow-up? Um, yes, I actually do have a follow-up relating to the Freshette. Um, I'm wondering, you know, given that many of the communities, including First Nation communities, are still in recovery mode, I've spoken to some people who say they haven't even exhaled enough to prepare for the spring thaw. Um, how ready are we for the possibility for another disaster? Well, I can, I, I can tell you that uh, prior to, uh, to this press conference, I was just in a, uh, a, a provincial, territorial uh, Indigenous Nations Committee meeting that uh, the province and the federal government set up uh, to deal with uh, these very issues in terms of recovery and, and, and flood uh, mitigation and preparedness and disasters in general. Uh, I can also tell you that uh, my ministry and other cross ministries are, have been preparing uh, for the freshet. Uh, right now we are waiting on the latest uh, update from the, uh, the weather center in terms of the conditions around the, the snowpack. Uh, one of the things obviously that, does do, uh, that will have an impact is the rate of thaw that takes place. Uh, while in many parts of the province um, the, uh, the snowpack is either at or slightly above normal, there are other parts of the province where snowpack is below normal. So for example in the Okanagan it is about 86%, it's about 109% in the coastal range and then up in the Peace River, Peace River Liard it was at about 143%. But one of the critical factors of course is what temperature does and that's being monitored very closely and I receive updates on that on a regular basis. At the same time, the repairs that were ongoing um, for or after the flood obviously continue, uh, and so we are uh, attempting to be as prepared as possible with local communities for the freshet system this spring. That's all the questions that we have, and that concludes today's event. Thank you very much, everyone.